This is another book by Helen Lester called Listen, Buddy. She again writes about animals, but this time she is writing about a rabbit instead of a rat. So what do you notice about Buddy? He doesn't listen well, even though he has big ears. So let's read to find out what kind of trouble Buddy gets into when he doesn't listen. So even though Buddy doesn't listen, you can listen carefully and find out some of the things that are special about Helen Lester's writing. Buddy's father had a beautiful big nose. He was a great sniffer. Buddy's mother had beautiful big teeth. She was a great chomper. Buddy had beautiful big ears. It didn't matter. When Buddy's parents sent him to the vegetable stand to get a basket of squash, he came home with a basket of wash. When they asked him to buy 15 tomatoes, he came home with 50 potatoes. So what mistakes is Buddy making? Okay, so listen to the story and see what happens when, when uh, Buddy is hearing but not listening. Buddy's father said, listen, Buddy, will you please bring me a pen? Who? Asked Buddy. You, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? A what? Asked Buddy. A pen, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? Sure, said Buddy. Buddy's father said, Listen, buddy. Okay, so the, the words aren't telling you what he brought, but if you look at the picture, his father asked for a pen, but he didn't bring that. Okay, so sometimes you need to listen to the words and look closely at the illustrations to know what's happening in the story. Okay. Buddy's mother said, listen, buddy. Will you please get me a slice of bread? Who? asked Buddy. You, said his mother. Will you please get me a slice of bread? A slice of what? asked Buddy. A slice of bread, said his mother. Will you please bring me a slice of bread? Sure, said Buddy. Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy. What did he bring her instead of a slice of bread? slice of bed. Somehow, Buddy's mind was always wandering too far away from those beautiful ears. His parents tried yelling, listen, Buddy. They tried whispering, listen, Buddy. Nothing worked. So why do you think that they try whispering? One day, Buddy got permission to go for a long hop. He had never been allowed to go beyond the vegetable stand. Listen, Buddy, his parents warned him. Just remember that the road ends in where there are two paths. The path to the left will lead you around the pond and back home. The path to the right will lead you to the cave of a scruffy varmint. And that scruffy varmint has a nasty temper, so be sure to take the path to the left. Right, said Buddy. Left, said his parents. Right, said Buddy. And with a salute of his paw, he hopped away. So just by what's happened in the story so far, what do you think Buddy's going to do next? Feeling very grown up, 
Buddy hopped along past the vegetable stand and on to the end of the road. Now let's see, he pondered, was I supposed to go left or right? Or right or left? He thought as hard as he could. The last thing I said was right, so it must be right. Right he went. Was that what he was supposed to do? 25 hops later, Buddy discovered that right was wrong. There in front of the cave was the scruffy varmint doing scruffy things that varmints do, like snarling, messing his hair, rubbing dirt on his knees, and scratching a whole lot of itches. At his feet was a large soup pot. What are you going to do with that soup pot? Asked Buddy. What does one usually do with a soup pot? Bake pie, replied the scruffy varmint, not very kindly. I'm going to make some soup. Some what, said Buddy. Soup, snarled the scruffy varmint. So, oh no, what do you think might happen to Buddy? Buddy had forgotten his parents' warning about the scruffy varmint. He e asked er eagerly, may I help? The scruffy varmint was not fond of having company, but with, with help, he'd have his soup sooner. So he said, all right, bunny rabbit, come here and help me gather firewood. Who, what? asked Buddy. You, firewood. Buddy eagerly hopped ahead of his scruffy varmint. Very gently, he gathered a, a large prickly bundle, which he held out proudly. Roughly, the varmint grabbed and pulled the bundle. I said firewood, not briarwood, he yelped, plucking the sharp thorns from his paws. Later, when the pot was filled with water, the scruffy varmint laid against a rock, licking his paws and barking orders. Hustle, bunny rabbit, get the flower. Yes, sir, said Buddy. Five pinches of salt. Yes, sir, said Buddy. What might he be doing with that ruler? Yeah. Fifteen tomatoes. Yes, sir, said Buddy. and a big load of squash. Yes, sir, said Buddy. The scruffy varmint rose and gave the soup a stir. He took a taste. It tasted a little like, well, a little like maybe it needed some pepper. Bunny rabbit, go get the pepper from the left side of the kitchen sink, the varmint growled. Who get the what from the where side of where what? Asked Buddy. The scruffy varmint repeated, who get the what from the where side of the where what? Never mind. He stopped into the kitchen and got the pepper himself and sprinkled it into the soup. There, he snarled, now bunny rabbit, put the soup on the fire. Buddy put the soup in the fire. So you might notice the, from the writing there, when when the author puts the words in all capital letters like that, it usually means that the character who's speaking is speaking strongly, maybe yelling. Um, and so that, that tells the person who's reading that the character was angry, right? The fire went, so did the scruffy varmin. I'll teach you, he howled. I will have soup. 
bunny rabbit soup, and I know just the bunny to use. The bunny rabbit who never listens. Buddy listened. He also hopped very, very, very fast. Faster than he'd ever hopped in his life. He whizzed up the road past the vegetable stand and into the safety of his house. A little later, when Buddy's parents asked him to bring a pen and a slice of bread, Buddy listened.